You know, a lot of people just regard the night as dark. And what we are finding with the day-night band is that there are so many sources of lights at night that we can take advantage of. This is a, a technology that is, enables us to see low levels of light. And we're talking about light that's not sunlight levels, but maybe a million times fainter than that level of light. So truly, it's a different kind of measurement. Um, the, the value of that measurement is that all the things that we need to see uh, during the day exist and continue to exist and change at night. So we have limited ability to do that right now with thermal measurements, which are the conventional thing that we use at night for imagery. With this low light imagery, we basically extend that capability that we have uniquely during the day to the nighttime hours. Certainly, as you uh, build up databases or, or imagery over time, you can see where the cities not only are, but where they're evolving. Um, you know, growth of cities, you can take differences in time, maybe 10 year difference, and actually see the growth or perhaps the shrinkage of a, a population center uh, by virtue of just the change in the lights. And offshore, there are, are clusters of, of points of light uh, that are uh, actually uh, fishing boats, large vessels that are uh, using heavy lighting to attract their catch. Uh, one thing to notice here is that the uh, North Korea has got very few lights. If we can take advantage of surface illumination sources such as fires, <laughs> lava, lightning flashes. Um, when the moon is up, we can use the, lo the lunar light as a surrogate for the sun and sea clouds, snow cover. Um, other surface properties like sea ice, things that are difficult to detect at night with thermal bands alone. We can take advantage of reflectance to see those things better and actually characterize them quantitatively with the day-night band. That's something we couldn't do before.